Oh, what is up? Joshua Casper here with another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this mastering rack. I call it a simple mastering rack because really all you have to do is drop it on your master channel. And once it's on there, it's just going to make your sound a lot um, tighter in the low end, a little bit expanded on the high end, and everything compressed. So it's, it gives it a little bit of punch and it and just really just makes the track a lot more solid. So um, if I play this loop here, I'm going to play it. It's just some, uh, some construction pack I made like a couple of years ago. Um, I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to turn this mastering rack on so we can hear what, uh, what it does to the sound. So as you can hear, it brightens up the higher end and tightens up the lower end. Um, I also have a limiter on there so we can get it louder if we wanted to. Um, but uh, I'm just going to go show you how to make this thing. and I think we'll learn a bunch of stuff along the way and um, it should be a lot of fun. Alright, so essentially what we're doing is making a multiband compressor um, and then adjusting things inside of it. Uh, you can use just the, the multiband dynamics, but why do that when you can make a cool rack and learn some other things along the way, right? So let's just go ahead and get started. Come into the audio effects, uh, drop an audio effects rack on the channel. And what I'm going to do inside of this is make a dry channel and then um, three wet channels. And we're going to use a chain selector to be able to adjust the, tr the dry signal and mix it in with the wet signal or have all of one or all of the other. And the way we do that is uh, first thing I'm going to do is come in here to where it says drop audio effects and right click and create chain. And I'm going to rename that dry. And then what I'm going to do is take an EQ3 and just drop that on there, drop that on there, drop that on there. So I've got four chains here. I'm going to come in and write low, mid, high. And the dry signal is fine. What I'm going to do is come into the chain here. Usually it's on hide by default. I'm going to come into the chain selector and I'm going to come in here and just pull this all the way over. That's by pulling the, the blue part here. And then I'm going to come up until I get this bracket here. And I'm going to pull that over. And that's the uh, amount from the, the chain, how much audio is coming from that chain. And then what I want to do is just pull this over one so it's at 126. You can see that number before uh, under the bracket. And then I'm going to do the same thing for these three here. I'm going to pull them over. Sweet. And I'm going to pull this over like this, oops, this over like this, and this over like this, and then I want to pull them all over one to one right here. And the reason why I'm doing that is that just to be absolutely positive that when the chain selector is all the way to the left, it's just getting the dry signal, and when it's all the way to the right, um, it's just getting the wet signal. I want to pull that and make sure that's all three of those are all the way over. The next thing I want to do is come up to where this uh, orange line is up here, which is this, the actual selector. Right click and map to macro one. And it's just going to say chain selector. You can rename it dry, wet. And now, if as we do, do this, you can see that it's going to slowly get to the wet signal until it's all the way wet or all the way dry. So that's how you set up a dry, wet signal inside of a, a audio effects rack. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put a limiter on the outside of this, just so we are all good. Sweet. Okay, and the reason why it got really, really loud right there is because right now we have three, EQ eight, uh, three EQ3s on these channels. So let's just go ahead and start messing around with this. First thing I'm going to do is come down to the... Make sure they're all on 24. Sweet. Uh, on the low, I'm going to turn off the mids and the highs, and I'm going to just turn them down just to be extra, extra careful. Uh, and on the mids, I'm going to do the same thing. And on the high, I'm going to do the same thing. But obviously, I'm going to be selecting just the highs. So now, there we go. And for the low here, I'm going to take the low, right click, and map to macro 2. The mid, map to macro 3. The high, map to macro 4. 
Sweet. And then what I'm going to do is come over and I'm just going to zero those out for now. Sweet. So that's good to go. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is put some compressors on here. And on this low one, I'm just... I found that um, for this simple mastering rack, um, I'm just going to use the preset here for the compressor. I'm just going to take it and drop it after this EQ, and I'm only going to deal with the threshold, and I'm going to do that same thing for all three of these. Now, I know that different music requires different things, but the goal of this tutorial is just setting up a rack for a starting place. I know people hate presets, they hate EQ8 presets, they hate all everything, but it's just good starting places. There's nothing wrong with that. So when someone starts running their mouth about it, just tell them, the, you know what you to tell them. And then we're going to come down to the slow, and I'm going to give it about, let's see, negative 18 on the threshold. Sweet. Mid. I'm going to go about negative 9. And on the high, I'm going to go negative 18. No, eight, negative 13, excuse me. So you can already hear. Um, we're, we're already making, the track already sounds better. What we've done is just um, compressed that low end a lot. We've pressed the high end a decent amount. We've pressed the mids just a tad. Uh, we can do um, things a little bit further if we wanted to. First thing I want to do, though, is take the frequency for the low and map it to macro 7 down here. All right. And then I want to come into the mid and map that same frequency to macro... Oh, I wanted to do 7. Let me come back here. Unmap. And map to macro 7. So now I can adjust which frequency uh, the, low, the low band is and the end of the low and the beginning of the mid. So that's which, which frequency will be compressed by the low band here. And I'm just going to put it at like 250 for now. I think that will be fine. 250 hertz. And I'm also going to do that same thing for the high here. Take that. And I'm going to put it on 8. And on the mid here, I'm going to put that on 8 as well. And I'm going to put that at 2,500 hertz or 2.5 kilohertz. Sweet. And obviously we can come in and adjust that if we want to. And not only that, but we can come in and solo to hear it. So like if we wanted to come to the low here. So if I wanted to, to compress just that sub end and leave the, uh, the mid range only compressed a little bit. And obviously now that we're making it, you could come in and adjust these things afterwards. But the point I, uh, of the rack itself is just to have eight knobs ready to go to be able to do these things kind of quickly. But obviously you want to get into it sometimes. But here we go. So... <laughs> I'm already pumped about it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go a little further and come into the audio effects and drop a utility on the low, drop a utility on the mid, and drop a utility on the high. And I'm going to come into the low and I'm going to take the width down to about 25% because I want that sub end to be pretty much in the center. Usually during the mixing process uh, on any sub instrument that I have or any of the sub, I'll have it in the complete center. But for the mastering rack, um, that should have already been done. And then we want to just kind of squeeze in those lower frequencies. And the mid-range, I'm going to pull up just a, just a couple, just a couple of a percent here, 102 percent. And I'm going to map that to macro 5. So I can bring that up 102 or something like that. And then on the high, I'm going to put it up to map to macro 6. And I'm going to bring the percentage up to about 110. So 
as you can hear, we've already got a decent little mastering rack um, just using devices native to live. Now, I have a limiter on the end here. As you can see, we're kind of bouncing, we're kind of uh, redlining a little bit. So I like to keep that limiter on there. And a good thing to do is to click that limiter, hold down shift, and then click over here in the audio effects rack, right click, and then group that. And then I'm going to open up these macro knobs and I'm going to map the gain from the limiter to macro one now. And I'm going to pull it up to about 2 dB. So as you can hear, it gives it that boost and everybody, you know, everybody wants their tracks to be as loud as David Guetta's tracks, you know what I'm saying? But uh, what that does is it doesn't give me room for all eight of these knobs. What I'm going to do is remap all of these here. I'm going to map these to the same macro knobs that we already had. Okay. And I'm just going to come in again, and I don't know, we can give it a little boost if we wanted. 2 dB, bring that right up to, I don't know, let's give it a whole boost. Maybe 0.5. Cool, and bring the stereo back up, 102%, 110. Bring this to 250, and this to 2500. Now, I know what you're saying. You're like, well, we could have probably just did that without putting this dry down here if we're just going to leave it all the way on the wet. And uh, that's totally true. I could have not used the dry channel here and not used this dry wet knob and thrown the uh, limiter inside of the rack itself. But um, I just like to have this dry here wet here so you can you can deal with that if you need to uh so i just think that's a good a good place to have it i think it's definitely worth it to be there and uh you know we don't need to look at it but we need to know it's there and we can use it if we need to you know what i'm saying same with all of these parameters i mean they're all here for you to use and to tweak and to um, do what you need to for your type of music and your type of track that you're mastering if you're going to use this for your final master. But, uh, you know, my the point, the goal of the tutorial and of this rack was just to have something you could come in and drop on the, uh, the master channel and just have it automatically tighten up that low end, spread out the high end, make it nice and bright, and just give it a little bit of a volume boost. And I th think uh, we've accomplished that. Anyway, uh, go ahead and download that as usual. Uh, rate, subscribe, comment. I feel so weird saying it, but not enough of you do it, surprisingly. But if you made it this far in the video, you should go do that right now. Anyway, uh, you know my name. We'll see you next time. Peace.